Oh boy, I, I, I said it at the uh, end here. There we go. This is there. We go. Okay, I'm hope you're you're seeing the focus for democracy action. Uh, yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, I, I'll just uh, announce. Um, uh, Irene is. Uh, uh, touting this organization for all these uh, reasons to uh, get us involved in the uh, in, in a very efficient way in the uh, next uh, election in November. And here's Irene's uh, uh, email. And there is actually a, a, another Zoom meeting at five today um, of of this uh, group. If any, you have to sign up in advance. So. Um, it, it, if this link, uh, if you if you want it, just just email me after uh, today's uh, session, uh, and I'll let you know about it. So um, I, uh, Ramsey's here, sitting by my side, and we picked a couple of real quick slides to uh, 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 summarize the previous two thousand years that we zipped through uh, <laughs> last week. Uh, we looked at uh, basically Russian history, uh, uh, and uh, we in, we included the Viking part and, and uh, all that, and and then we uh, ended with uh, the threat, the European uh, threats, in, which ended with Napoleon, and uh, of course uh, the. Um, uh, and Homer's here to to witness uh, the uh, Alexander uh, uh, the first coming in through uh, the Arc de Triomphe in, in Paris. So the Russians saw off um, uh, Napoleon. Lo uh, long story short, um, and then uh, they turned to their southern border. They were having a problem uh, with. Uh, White slavery on uh, the, the border with the uh, southern border with the Turkish uh, uh, tribes, uh, not tribes, but uh, the the right word would be emirates or khanates. The khanates, that's the word I was searching for. Um, and then uh, the the other part of the Russian history that uh, I just uh, go back to, or the Mongol part, I should have put that uh, ahead of it. Um, and the the Mongol le uh, legacy, the Mongol brutality, we can see a little bit of that in in the Ivans and the uh, 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 certainly the 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 use of um, uh, internal uh, security. Yes, Harold. Before we leave the slide with the, the Czar going through the Arc de Triomphe, I wanted to ask: Is a story about the bistro being a, Ru a Russian? Uh, invention for the cafes in Paris true at all? I don't. Bistro meant faster, faster in Russian. At the time. Oh, really? <laughs> ha! I I did not know that. Ico uh, uh, studying French. Ico. <laughs> <laughs> Bistro, I did not know. <laughs> we'll report back next week, Harold. Uh, all right. No, so, it's no, it's absolutely true. Yeah, no, bistro is is Russian. Yeah. Really? Uh, That's. Huh. Uh, doesn't sound Russian. Doesn't sound French anyway, does it? <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So, the, the, uh, in any case, in the early the uh, the uh, Russian princes uh, in Moscow were tax collectors for the Mongols, and they finally. With uh, Ivan told the Mongol, we're not collecting any more of your uh, taxes. Uh, uh, and then um, uh, uh, the Mongols left uh, a, a legacy, not just culturally, but also uh, genetically and a few uh, famous uh, Russians. Um, then uh, the Mongols were really... Uh, I say succeeded, but it was a lot of stuff going on at the same time with uh, uh, Turkish 
uh, uh, tribes, uh, the, the Seljuks, eventually uh, the Ottomans, um, but before that, uh, uh, Tamerlane, um, uh, he, he had a, a, a Turkish empire that uh, extended all the way to, to Baghdad and, and India. Um, and uh, I'm going the wrong direction here. And this is uh, the the territory he he, he controlled. And uh, here we we reach um, uh, a part where I hand it over to Ramsey. But first, Jim, you have a question. Well, uh, we're still seeing the democracy slide. I didn't know if you wanted to configure it differently. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have a. I have a view of a bunch of slides on the left and the democracy slide in the middle. Oh, Iko, have you shared yours? Shared what? I just turned this on. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, man. Thank you, Jim. Jeez. Yeah. I just turned it off. Uh, and John, from, from Wikipedia, Russian bistro, B-Y-S-T-R-O, means rapidly, which evolved into bistoil, B i s t o u i l e, which means bad alcohol, and from that came the French word bistro. So it is indeed Russian and French. <laughs> huh. uh, uh, wow. Okay, that's that's interesting. All right. Well, we're we're trying to. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, you've all seen uh, these slides from before. Uh, Last week, uh, I can stay. I'll stay around after we sign off for anybody that really wants to see the same slides that we saw um, uh, last week. Um, and all right, so are, are you now? You can plug in. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So we're are you uh, are you sharing? Sharing what? Yeah. Uh, well, this year? You have to share the slide, right, Ico? Right. Yeah. You well, have, John, um, you just to, while we're waiting for the share to come across, uh, update on French use of other languages for fast food. Uh, a BGV is a boeuf à grande vitesse. Uh, to boeuf is to eat very rapidly. So it's a boeuf à grande vitesse is their word for fast food, a beef, <laughs> BGV. <laughs> well, the grande vitesse means go fast. Go right? fast. And boeuf is uh, boeuf something you put in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a play on the expression TGV or exactly. TGV. Yeah. The, the, right. tron, the train. To yeah. uh, grande vitesse, and so they just, you know, yeah, exactly, very, yeah, it's fun, yeah, beef, beef. Is it being shared? Because uh, is it being shared yet? No, no. I uh, okay, I uh. I can't see the screen, Donnie. It's so small. I don't know why. All right, are you seeing the? Uh, oh. Uh, see the green at the top, Ico. Green. Yeah, yeah. I bring. I see up there at the very top, in the middle, in the middle, in the butt, in the middle. Okay. I can't even see what. It yeah, well, click on it. I did. I click a little bit higher. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And John, I still see your slide focused for democracy action. Yeah, everybody does it. Yeah, everybody uh, does, and and it's because. Uh, I have to try this share. Do you have to stop sharing though? I wonder before she can share. Nothing clicks. No, that's that's the share something else. And, and this okay, okay, we're gonna start over here. I'm gonna stop share. Yeah. Okay, and now uh, I'm gonna take this uh, down um here okay i'm gonna now now share screen wait okay wait wait let me do this and then i'll share there we go okay you know i can't see <laughs> the lettering on this is so tiny 
Yeah, I know. Okay, that because when you shut the screen off, then it, okay. Now we need something more than that. You're getting my letter and uh, my email and everything else except your screen. Where's your screen? Coming up. Right. Um, okay, uh, so now can everybody see? Focus on democracy for democracy. Action Alex one. The art, the playoff. You got Alexander the first? Yep. Okay, Alexander uh, the first. Uh, he had a problem, white slavery, the Mongols uh, left their heritage, the Turks uh, came, uh, Tamerlane all the way to Baghdad. Uh, and now I turn it over. <laughs> the, the most complicated uh, border, <laughs> southern border of uh, Russia is uh, not as quite as complicated as uh, uh, Zoom sharing, but uh, pretty darn complicated. Oh, okay, so I guess I'm taking over here um, in this smooth transition from <laughs> God knows what to uh, to even worse, I suppose. Uh, it, part, pardon me if I start hacking away. I've had these allergies for a while, although now I think it's maybe COVID. So, uh, John was doing it COVID too. Uh, I, I, John, John encouraged me to be part of this because there was this issue of uh, Putin and the uh, uh, and, and, and suffering from jihadist uh, killing some of his uh, peaceful citizens, and and uh, Janet and I had been in these in, in the Caucasus and uh, Central Asia uh, periodically the last couple of years. So we had some slides here, and I don't know that this is going to be a smooth transition or answer any of your questions or contribute much, but we'll give it a shot here. Uh, to, we were in the Caucasus a couple of years ago, and. Uh, uh, these are simply slides taken from a PowerPoint after the after our trip. Uh, the caucus they, when we had flown from Istanbul to uh, Tbilisi, Georgia, and the question came up was, "Are are we are we in Europe or are we in Asia now? I wonder where the hell we are." And of course, that's not an easy answer here. Where the hell is the border? There, uh, because there's been so many people that have accumulated in the mountainous areas, particularly the Caucasus. Uh, over the centuries, uh, and uh, and we'll do some Caucasus stuff first, and then move to Central Asia and see if any of this contributes to the question of why Islam is uh, got it in for Russia to some degree, or or just in got it in for imperialism to another degree. Uh, there, there's there's a, a so-called ethnic map of uh, of the Caucasus, and that is itself extraordinarily simplified. Uh, it's it's inherited from the German uh, ethnic ethnog ethnographers, who the Russians hired once the Russians decided. After well, we, 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 I should back up here and do a little bit more, better background. Alexander the First is full of himself after defeating, defeating Napoleon, and uh, really is maybe the most powerful uh, leader in Europe for a period of time. He is anything but. A, an enlightened uh, enlightened leader. He is a, uh, a Christian bureaucrat. And in fact, he is the leader of the so-called Holy Alliance. He uh, and Prussia and Austria, and they will fight like hell to make sure that these idiotic enlightenment ideas do not prosper in Europe for the next, uh, the next 30 years. And they're quite successful. So uh, all the enlightenment uh, stuff that Napoleon should have gotten a great deal of credit for if he hadn't been stupid enough to invade Russia, um, uh, like the metric system and uh, and, and, and allowing uh, Karl Marx's uh, dad, to, uh, to, who was Jewish, to be uh, to practice it, uh, law in and, uh, and what is now France and for a while at any rate. Um, that, uh, when, as you remember, I think, uh, Napoleon is greeted as a great hero once he comes in and wipes out the Holy Roman Empire at first. Then it becomes a problem when he's real, when the uh, people in Germany and Italy and so forth realize he's going to tax them more heavily uh, for his army. And in any case, Alexander the First is is anything but an Enlightenment figure. Uh, and but he he's got he's got uh, a 
uh, the the bit between his teeth because he's he's the country is growing. He's defeated Napoleon. There is an attempt now to sort of move into areas that have not been conquered by previous uh, previous monarchs like Catherine the Great and before that Peter the Great. And 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 where is that going to be? Well, it's going to be Central Asia and it's going to be the Caucasus and so forth. They Russia gets gets waylaid by the by the Crimean War. Uh, uh, the, the Crimean War, of course, is uh, Russia's, the, the thing they most want is a warm weather port. Uh, they want to get to the Caspian Sea. They're going to get there easily because by that time, the 1830s, the 1840s, uh, the Ottoman Empire is pretty much uh, bankrupt uh, and a mess. Uh, but the British and the French are going to uh, bankroll the Ottoman Empire to make sure that Russia doesn't get to the uh, the, the warm weather port, and then that creates a real mess in Russia and so forth. They get over that. Um, then France and, and Britain have their own problems from 1840 forward, and Russia is now relatively free to start uh, uh, moving toward the Caucasus yet again. And they're going to have some success by the 1850s and 1860s. W once they have success, they look around and say, well, what, what the hell do we have? What, who are these people? And they say, and then the, the people aren't going to answer back. They, they hire German ethnographers to tell them who they got. Well, Germany is the hotbed of ethnography then, because Germany itself is still not quite unified. Uh, the, the Bismarck hasn't come along, but they're becoming obsessed with uh, ethnic, the ethnic identity. And so they come down, the German ethnographers come down, and, and, and they don't know what they're looking at either, but they start dividing the Caucasus into groups based on language, which uh, doesn't necessarily correspond uh, to ethnography. It, at any rate, you can see this complicated map. And it's still complicated that way today, even though there's an attempt to create nation states. Um, and the Russians say, well, that's, that, that's good news. Now we want to control these people. So we're going to start moving them around. We're going to take people that you've identified, you Germans have identified as uh, Ossetians, and move them out of places that you call Dagestan. Maybe you can, and that you see over next to the Caspian Sea, a blue area called Dagestan. We should make a point of Dagestan because it shows up in a, a bit here. Uh, uh, most of these people are Muslims. Uh, all, in fact, all of them are Muslims, except the Georgians and the Armenians. So Russia is now going to control an area that it knows very little about, um, but becomes obsessed with because. The mountains are beautiful, more beautiful than the Alps in some ways. Uh, and, and, and and let's go forward. Um, there's a even a a, 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 a language, uh, well, another map of ethnicity, uh, which doesn't necessarily correspond to language at all. Uh, the, and so it's a complicated, complicated part of the world still is today, although there's an attempt to now create a Georgian Georgian nationality and the ball based on myths. Um, there's a there's a map that is mostly dedicated to uh, to religion. Uh, all the green is going to be one branch of Islam or another. The the orange, of course, is Georgia. The red is Armenia. The two countries that claim to be the first and second in the world to embrace Christianity. Ethiopia will claim claim to be the uh, the fourth. Uh, the uh, the uh, so, so so it's an area that is primarily Muslim, uh, except for these two areas that have been uh, since the three hundred uh, an interesting and curious branch of Christianity, and not the same either. So the Georgian branch of Christianity, the Armenian branch of Christianity, don't agree with one another at all, and they they have some conflict as well. Um, so if you go way back from about the time these areas, the, the Georgia and Armenia will adopt Christianity to all about 1000, for most of that time, the, the uh, Caucasus are going to be dominated either by the Byzantine Empire or the Persians, because after all, the, Byz the Caucasus are right between the Byzantine Empire and the Persian empires. And uh, it'll, they'll, they'll go back and forth and back and forth. And they're really not much in control of their own destiny. That is, Georgia and, and Armenia are not much in the control of their own destiny. Until, and, and, until a, a, an opportune moment ha comes when they are able to have a little bit of independence for a little while. Um, and that will happen for Georgia. I'm focusing on Georgia because we spent most of our time visiting Georgia, but Armenia as well. There's a, there's a moment here 
when the Arabs have uh, have gone pretty far east toward uh, uh, toward China and, and said, that, well, that's as far as we're going to go, are we now going to try and conquer the Caucasus, which is not easy to do because it's so darn mountainous. Uh, and if a Georgian family comes to the fore fighting against the Arabs and they will create for about 200 years it, the gold, the so-called golden age of the Georgian, a uh, Georgian ethnic identity, unless you, you know, we go way back to uh, to uh, to the golden, the golden fleece and stuff, that, which is really mythological. And there's some interesting history here, which is not worth going over, ex unless you're visiting Georgia. Uh, all, except to maybe note that the most famous ruler of all in this golden golden age of Georgia, Georgia, Georgia was was a queen, um, mm -hmm. Queen Tamar, and uh, she's still valued as their most the most wonderful ruler of all time. Pictures of her all over the place in Georgia, this and that and so forth. But that that's like much else in all of the Eurasian world that will be brought to a uh, a crashing halt once the Mongols invade. And uh, and their the glory days of their independence are over and over for a long, long time. Um, so from about the 15th century to 18th century, we're now getting up to when Russia is going to start to invade. Russia has declined into a bunch of uh, squabbling uh, kingdoms. Armenia is no better off uh, fighting one another more than they're fighting outside forces and are sort of open to uh, to being conquered by anyone that's got the the, the nerve the, the resources, the, the, the will, the interest in, in conquering them. And Russia what Russia will be the latest uh, area on the scene. So here's a bit of a timeline. I'll go back into a little bit more history. Um, Russia has, uh, it, even before Napoleon has invaded, Russia is uh, doing well under Alexander I. They've defeated Persia. Uh, there's the, the door is open into the Caucasus if they want to take a chance. There's the Napoleonic episode in 1812, 1813, 1840. That is taken care of. Uh, Alexander I is now back on track for us, expanding his empire as much as he can. This is the, the creation of the Georgian military highway, which many of you maybe never heard about, but uh, it, it really is quite an incredible, incredible uh, engineering task that uh, a lot of Russian soldiers will die, but they will get it done. So you that that blue line runs from the 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 north side of the Caucasus to Tbilisi, which is on the south side of the Caucasus. It's a, quite an engineering feat, and uh, and having done that, the Russians now have the ability to move troops into the Caucasus uh, and see if they can do some conquering. They will be stopped by the uh, Crimean War, and this the the efforts to take over the Caucasus will be put on hold until the Crimean War is over. It is over um, and, and in the 1850s, 1860s with some really brutal fighting. Russia is by 1860 more or less pacified. These, these, these tough, 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 tough troops, think Taliban, I suppose, uh, the love, love fighting uh, um, and, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in, a, in just a bit of, with a few pictures. Um, after World War I, uh, the, the Russian Empire has collapsed. Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan all declare independence. It won't last long because the Red Army, after it has won the Civil War in the Soviet Union, will say, well, actually, you're not independent. You're part of us. You're part of the Soviet Union. Uh, and, and they were at first, those three republics, now separate countries, will be rolled into a single Soviet later by 18 by 1936, which is the same year that Stalin will create the five uh, stands uh, uh, that we know as independent countries now uh, and turn them into the Soviets. In 1836, Stalin will, will divide these three into uh, into separate uh, into separate Soviets, and then that's where that's where the independence comes from. It's all a history of the Soviet Union. Um, and then, then World War II will happen, and we'll mention that a bit. In 1991, the uh, utterly out of the blue, no one saw it coming. Um, the I guess I guess the Estonians saw it coming, the Ukrainians saw it coming, but uh, um, these people in in Caucasus and the Central Asia had no idea the Soviet Union was on the verge of falling apart. So it happened out of the blue, and 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 most of these certainly the 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 three countries, three now countries 
in the Caucasus and the five in the Central Asia were not prepared at all because it was a, a, a big shock to them. Um, uh, just a little, just a, 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 a little, <laughs> I mean, this is, this is, so here, just, just, just to, to drive home a point, now, now it's Russia. And and rich Europeans can drive the military highway and go down and drink uh, drink wine in the area of the world that claims to be where wine began. The Ge and Georgians probably have some historical truth to say this is where wine first evolved in, in our country of Georgia. And here's how we did it. Uh, and 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 the, the scenery is beautiful, but more beautiful than the Alps in some ways. This the uh, you got resorts that open up. Well, it's this is just European imperialism. You can imagine. Uh, those that uh, uh, sort of resent this uh, holding on. And, and unlike North America and Central and South America, these people don't die off because of uh, malaria. And I mean, because of smallpox and the measles and so forth, they stay alive. And they're, once they become independent, as they are now, they remember their history. And there's a temptation to say, you know, now that we are independent, we want maybe some revenge or whatever. I mean, it becomes very complicated for these countries. There's a picture of, oh my God, I was only 32 years old sitting on the oh. city. Oh, long ago. And Janet was less than 30 years old looking. We, we didn't even know what the hell we were looking at. Uh, uh, this, this, this incredible church up on the hills uh, and these mountains, which are higher than anything else in, in the Alps and so forth. And uh, we went back a couple of years ago and hiked up there in the rain. That was unpleasant. Um, so backing up a bit, uh, and then this, this, this sort of makes a point regarding Russia's invasion. This, this, the, the, the family that had run Georgia during its golden age, say 1050 to 1250, is still in charge, but really they don't have much control over any, anything. They have to seek Russian protection in, in 1783 because uh, they're they're too weak to defend themselves. And of course, once you, once you uh, invite the Russians in to protect you, it won't be long before the Russians will take over. We'll see the same thing in Central Asia. But the Russians do come into Central Asia. Here's a, an example of, uh, of the aristocrats saying, this is, well, this is so romantic, these mountains, we don't have mountains like this. The Ural Mountains aren't really mountains, they're just uh, hills. We're gonna go uh, have open a resort and send our sons to, to open a, a, a to, to create the farms down there somewhere in the the, the Georgian mountains and the and the, here was one of these places and it really you can visit it as a tourist uh, but but to make this where we were there's a couple of stupid tourists wandering around looking at the wine and the mm -hmm. and the Russian culture and pianos and all this stuff in the middle of a, a completely different society uh, well they hadn't given up yet. And the Mongols and the, the various uh, fighters said, okay, you think you've conquered us, but we can fight back. We can take, we can uh, inflict damage on you. Here's probably the most famous of all these people that fought back, uh, the emir, uh, the, the imam of uh, Shamil from Dagestan, that little, that little piece of blue that I showed you uh, in the Caucasus Mountains uh, next to the uh, Caspian Sea. And he was able to uh, inflict some serious damage uh, on Russians here and there, including a, a famous episode. Every Russian would know about this. Every Georgian would surely know about this when he's able to come into this resort I just uh, showed you a picture of and and uh, and capture the kidnap the wife of one of the sons. And and Russia is shocked and the West is shocked as well. What the hell? We thought we control these people. And there's there's there's, there's a, a fight a force fighting back. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. I can't hear. You. I can't hear you. I'm holding up a book called The Sabers of Paradise. you I can't hear you. Well, is this Harold? It's Harold, yeah. Yeah. You, say, try again. I'm holding up a book. It's called The Sabers of Paradise. The Sabers of Paradise, and this yes. is this guy. This is this guy. This is this guy. He was famous. Yeah. He was yeah, famous. He's, re he's really famous. It's, it's a great book. You should check he, it out. Uh, he's famous. Uh, he became a, a kind of a romantic hero for many of the uh, many of the writers, including uh, uh, Tolstoy, uh, who was disgusted with the corruption of the Roman em of the uh, the Russian Empire. Um, I'll mention that in a bit. Yeah, he eventually retires, and and I think he uh, he, he dies and. 
Harold's gonna, we're gonna, George, uh, let's, I hope we're gonna try and see this picture that you're, whatever. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, now, I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat so everybody can see. Put it in the chat, John. I can't go forward now. So what did you yeah. do? Okay. Uh, no, we're going backwards. That's okay. No, no. That, there we go. There. Okay. There he is again. Uh, he is famous, and then you get there's he's a lot written about him. On the left, on the left in this slide, is a, a set of. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who these are, but they're th these. This is these are gangs of fighters. Throughout the Caucasus, we visited one of these uh, sites, and uh, um, I, <laughs> I was actually a little nervous because I'd read some stuff that it was a little dangerous to to go there, and <laughs> maybe these guys are not friendly to a tourist, and maybe you'll have your throat slit and get a little. And this was two, three years ago, um, but we were we were actually safe. So here we are. We're 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 in. This is northern Georgia. Janet and I are. Um, book this as part of the tour we're going to take right at, at, at the heart and soul of the Caucasus Mountains. We're in the, 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 the village there that you could fly into if you didn't want to take the, the, the eight hour drive uh, on pretty good roads to get there. Uh, it's called Mestia. Uh, there it is. And you can walk around. It's, it's stunningly pretty. And there's all these all these goofy towers that, that sort of resemble the fewer, the two or three that are left in in northern Italy, but there's 200, 300 of these things still left. They haven't fallen apart. There, many of them are 300 years old. What are they? Well, uh, the for for hundreds and hundreds of years up there in the uh, uh, in the North Caucasus, various tribes had fought. I mean, truly tribes. I mean, villages had fought one another back and forth. Blood feuds, the uh, the, the, the militarism. Um, or, right, is Taliban like we we fight we like to fight uh, the women have babies so they can we have more fighting and and they would build these towers to uh, the, with for three functions um, one of course was a safe place to hide when when the world war is on another is a watchtower similarly also good storage space um, and then they're all over the place and these are tough people you, you look at that and you say. Well, we're in Scotland, aren't we? Well, no. I mean, these are these are as crazy as the Scots. They're nuts as well. They they instead of throwing telephone poles, but these are these are games just like the Scottish games that the the, the Georgians up in this area. That I, I think they would re, they would not like they they don't like to be called Georgians. They say no, we're Savians. Um, and we part of our tour was to take was take this windy dirt road. My God, we weren't driving happily. I would I I'd have thrown up. But to, and got to this village. Uh, I'd read a book there. The book uh, that I'd read, uh, which was uh, highly recommended if you were ever interested in the, a brief history of the Caucasus. I'd seen this picture and I told our driver, "Stop! Stop! I've seen this picture before. I want to take you. I want to take that exact picture because we we God knows we're here." And we're in this village that I was a little fearful of um, because I'd heard these stories and and even seen a video of a of a, a recent uh, um, Brit who had traveled there and he was hush hush you're about it's a little dangerous here we won't and so well it's it's all touristy now and then there's coke machines and there's coffee to be had and the, there's hikes to be taken uh, so we were safer than I thought uh, other than the uh, the two drunken Polish hikers that we spent the morning with. And uh, and I, I was complaining about Trump and they got really angry. They said, Trump is a great guy. Trump is a wonderful man. We 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 Poles think he's great. And then and on and on they went. They it was 9 a.m. in the morning, they were drunk as could be. Well, uh, you know, Poland, remember that big sign? Uh Rudy Giuliani was coming to talk. Oh yeah. Oh, it's true. It's, 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 Iko was saying that Rudy the, the, the rival Rudy Giuliani was a big uh, was a big deal in uh, in Poland as well. They Poland has elected a good guy now, so leave Poland alone. And, uh, and then, uh, so we wandered through and we stepped in cow manure and uh, and saw goats and uh, it it's quite. And in, in any case, that 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 culture is now probably in the in the in the moment uh, in the last couple of years, the last decade or so on the verge of becoming pure pure alpine tourism because the hiking is so glorious and they can make more money on that 
but it's very recent. That happened in the last 10 years. Uh, uh, the, the fighting continued among those groups for a quite, quite some time. So the Russians have now got the Caucasus. Uh, uh, and what they're going to do with them is, uh, is, uh, is to be decided. And the, uh, and the uh, under the Roman Empire, I'm sorry, under the, the yeah, the, the, the old Roman Empire. I mean, the old Russian Empire, sorry. And, and various things will happen. Uh, the Russian, it becomes, as I've said before, one of the most, maybe the most romantic spots in the whole empire because of its physical glories. Uh, Pushkin comes five or six times and spends time to police. It's, uh, Tolstoy holds up, writes three or four famous books uh, about life in the Caucasus, uh, where he glorifies these 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 uh, these tough fighters who fight against uh, Western corruption and blah blah blah. The Romanovs have a uh, a, a a resort uh, in Georgia, not far from Tbilisi, where there's a. Uh, uh, medicinal mountain waters there. Uh, here's a rather oops, went too fast. Here's a here's a, a pretty sad little picture uh, of the Romanov family in 1911 because the little girl off there on the left is Anastasia, oh. and uh, you'll of course be uh, they'll all be dead uh, by by 18 by 1918. Um, so Georgia is part of the Ru Ru Russian Empire. Uh, the Russians are not quite sure what to do with it. They bring they bring stuff that's going to start turning this backward part of the world uh, into uh, something a little bit more modern. Uh, take, uh, first the road, then there's a railroad that comes from the from the uh, uh, from the uh, from, the, uh, from the Black Sea, uh, medicine, education, yada yada yada. And there's even some development of, of industry because there's re resources down there. And there is, just before World War I, sort of the vague, vague beginnings uh, in, in the Caucasus of, work, of, of a worker mentality. There is some mm -hmm. manufacturing going on. And, 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 and of course, you've got, <clears throat> you, you've, you've got the uh, communists and socialists talking about the, the Mensheviks, who are not the, 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 the opponents of the Bolsheviks are starting to champion the cause of workers, even down here in Georgia. World War I will happen. The empire will be gone. Georgia claims independence, as does Armenia, as does, uh, as does Azerbaijan. But it, it won't last. The, the, red, the, the Russians, the, Rush, the, the Red Army will win. They will uh, turn uh, the Caucasus into a Soviet. And then World War II happens. Then uh, we sat there in what are really rather glorious, recently built nice hotel, drinking a glass of nice Georgian wine, chatting with the owner of this place. Uh, and and uh, he's, uh, we got talking about this and that and so forth. And the, turn, the, the conversation turned to World War One, and he looked at us straight in the face and this is his quote, or that his son said, yeah, it's, it, it, it's true. The Soviet Union could not possibly beat beaten Hitler in World War II without U.S. military assistance. Still, let, let, let me just give you some numbers here. Um, and and this, this I, I wrote this, I said, say that again, because I want to get this quote exactly right. He said, uh, you know, every family in Georgia lost somebody in World War II. You guys lost uh, 445,000. He knew the numbers, how many people were killed, how many Americans were killed in World War II. We lost 300,000. Uh, and they said, go home and do the ratio of uh, how, how much of our us died. World War II absolutely changed this, the, 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 the thinking of the people in the Soviet Union that went through that and suffered and died and, uh, and, or had relatives that died and came out on the other side as winners. Uh, and we heard this in, in Central Asia uh, the, 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 over and over again. Um, and, and 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 so there was some satisfaction of being part of the Soviet Union in contrast to what we heard as we were growing up as everyone in the Soviet Union, every 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 citizen of the Soviet Union wanted the place to die and be free and have democracy. And Georgia did very well um, uh, for a whole series of reasons. Some of it was terrible corruption. Armenia, as I'll get to in a minute, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going too fast. Slow up, old man. Another thing we heard from the the owner of this hotel where we stayed was, you know, when I had this built, I I, I would not hire any Georgians. I only hired our Azerbaijanis, the goddamn Georgians, drink, 
uh, we, we have about 20 religious holidays every month. Uh, and the other 10 days, uh, most Georgians are hung over. We're a country, we're a desperately miserable country. Um, I, I will only hire Azerbaijanis to come work in this place. They're, they, they're Muslims, they don't drink. Muslims. And so, <laughs> they're trustworthy, they show up on time. It was, it was a fascinating, I mean, you've all, you've all traveled. You know that you, these, these moments come up when you say, God, I wish I could spend another decade here and then hear some more of this gossip. Here's, here's the, our guide took us to visit his family who were all well-educated. And uh, among the things they had to say was, yeah, Shaska Vili, he was our first, he was our president uh, under the Rose Revolution. He was too brutal, so we voted him out of power. We're, we probably made a mistake because he was actually a pretty good guy and a modernizer. Meanwhile, the governments we've gotten in between they promise a lot. They don't do much. It, 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 it seems to us that the church is what's running this country these days. And we sure as hell are not an independent country. I mean, we are we are buffeted about by outside forces. Uh, our only real hope here in Georgia, and the Armenians would say the same thing, is to someday be part of the e EU. And the, 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 the sister of our guide, uh, a, a very bright woman, well-educated, beautiful English, she said, you know, we're struggling. We don't know what to do. We, we, we know we should stay here as young people and try and make Georgia into a wonderful country. But really, for our kids, we want to get the hell out of here. And we want to get to Europe and, uh, uh, and maybe and, and have a better chance because this place is a mess. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and we never did have much discussion about what they thought about the Soviet Union because they were too young then. Um, but but this we had discussion of this. We were arrived uh, you know, about two months after the gay pride gay pride parade. We said, "Well, it's progressive." Said, well, you may think it's progressive, but the same day the gay pride parade was going on, all the uh, all the monks from the church mar marched as well, and they just started beating up everyone in the mob, everyone in the gay pride parade, and uh, and and. <laughs> And this became a, a really interesting part of our discussion with this family because our guide um, was pretty much uh, homophobic. And uh, he said, look, I, I'm okay. I can allow, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with there being homosexuality, but don't make fun of my country because we're religious. And the sister sort of looked at him in the eye and we sort of dropped the topic as soon as possible. Uh, but there, there's not much question about it. The, 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 the Georgian church is really conservative uh, and backward looking, much like the uh, much like Putin's confessor. Um, and, 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 and that's and that's and that's uh, that's Georgia. We were in Armenia. Armenia. <laughs> Armenia is terrible. I mean, the poor place. And this is this is a country that for. Way back, of course, well, uh, let's not do way back. In the, during the Soviet times, Armenia did fantastically well because it had a very well-educated population. You know, we, we, I think we grew up learning about all the Russian chess, all the Soviet chess masters that won the, the chess championship of the world. They were all Armenian. Uh, and uh, in fact, it's still today, if you're in Armenia, uh, you, you are t t playing chess as a... It, it required part of your high school curriculum. Yeah, everyone's oh. got to play chess. Uh, they they did well. They had they they were given by the central uh, the central planning commission their their share of industrial w w work. So there's enough uh, enough industrialization of every one of the Soviets, and included. So there was pretty good work there. Um, now it, it, it is one of the poor. It's an incredibly poor country. And if it weren't for the fact that there are, I think, 10 times as many Armenians living outside of Armenia than in Armenia, and they send money back to Armenia, Armenia would be like one of the poorest countries in the world. They're really a great deal of trouble. Um, uh, I mean, you can see on the left there uh, the, the loss of population once independence happened. Um, the, the politicians talk uh, dramatically about how the population is going to come back. Demographers say it's not coming back. There's no work here. Uh, there's no there's no real future here. Every day we passed at least three factories which have been shut and will never open again. Um, these were Soviet factories, part of the Central Planning Commission. Fair enough. Anyone that wants to argue that they were inefficient because there was only one of these in the whole Soviet Union. 
that's that's true but they but but under those circumstances every every under the soviet union uh there was enough uh divvying up of uh of in, industrialization in the various republics so that there was some um, some progress and there was some industrialization and there was jobs and so forth our guy arthur there was uh, in charge of a shoe manufacturing company and went to china regularly to sell russian Soviet shoes and so forth, and the Soviet Union fell apart, and he had to become a guide. And he said, "Oh yeah, guide. That, you know, I'm driving this Kia. You don't be, don't be worried. Kia means, and in, in I mean, it means killed in action." So, uh, <laughs> and, he, and he talked, he talked openly about uh, say, I, "I'm doing fine because I've got good English. I've got a good job, but uh, we are not doing well as a country." Uh, and uh, and there's a great deal of nostalgia for the Soviet Union here too, not from the young. Uh, not for the young. Um, jump to Central Asia, and it's uh, uh, Central Asia is a is a is a whole different set of uh, circumstances regarding its past, because uh, there was a period of time. Some of you have heard this because you saw it, some of you came to the, uh, the the PowerPoint that Janet and I did of our uh, of our trip at large. Uh, there was a time when Central Asia, say seventeen fifty seven fifty to eleven fifty was the heart of human learning on the planet Earth. Um, it wasn't so much Islamic learning as it was uh, Silk Road learning because if you are if you are on a trade route you are and 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 and, and uh, goods, silk, glassware, uh, everything else is moving back and forth through your cities. Ideas move back and forth as well. Um, religions and so forth and, and so there the, the 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 number of dollars that produced uh, uh, it's still important uh, breakthroughs in math and science in particular, but also poetry that came out of the Central Asia's golden age are, are really rather stunning. I mean, they knew damn well, way, way, way before Calpernicus, that the, the sun, uh, we rotated around the sun and blah, blah, blah. And, and they, they got the they got the angle of the earth rotate, the, the angle of the earth's uh, um, um, uh, the, the tilt, sorry, thank you, John, and and and, and all sorts of other stuff, rather right, uh, and, and many other things, um, and 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 that that age that age did not last forever, of course. Uh, uh, the the Mongols put that end to a, a great deal of the glory, but there were moments that that was re resurrected. Tamerlane, as John had mentioned, uh, will reconquer a great deal of Central Asia, brutal as hell. Pretty awful. Uh, the Mongols had been the same, uh, but on the other hand, he brought with him all the scholars that he had conquered and the architects and, and put together a, a a kind of new uh, a, a Islamic architecture called Timurid architecture, which was really rather stunningly glorious, and will eventually uh, lead to the Taj Mahal in India as well. I mean, here we are in front of uh, in in in. in um, you know, Come on, old man. Uh, and Samarkand in front of the uh, the Registron, uh, three separate uh, madrasas built after Tom Lane had died, uh, and we so were there in the evening, and it's and the sun went down, and and we were there all through the night, and most of us said we don't want to go home. This place is gl bloody glorious, and no, uh, please don't shut down. Uh, just to, just to make a small point, uh, as we as we left two days later, one of our traveling companions, a guy who had traveled an enormous amount, he had money, and he said, "Look, uh, I, for, I've spent most of my life because I was uh, I was at, I was in the Taj Mahal when I was 24, telling everyone that the most beautiful thing I've ever seen is the Taj Mahal. I'm ready to change my mind." I think this is. I think that. I think this is at least the equal, if not more, impressive. Okay. So, so this was a great culture for a long time, um, and and even as Tam Tamerlane, even as the Europeans are now, uh, because of the uh, the Portuguese getting around the Cape of Good uh, Hope and getting to um, getting to India and developing some over, overseas travel, some oceanic travel, slowly, gradually, the Europeans are able to, to substitute, uh, to some degree, oceanic trade for Silk Road trade. Even then, the Silk Road was still doing pretty well. There was plenty of trade nonetheless, especially with Russia. Uh, so the, the, the glories of, this, of the Silk Road lasted for quite some time, but by 1750, it's over. 
and it's over for uh, because by now the European the oceanic trade is absolutely dominating world trade, and the tech the the military technology that is coming out of Europe um, it, it, it is going to overwhelm what has been the the fact of the life or the step for. 2,000 years, namely the semi-nomadic tribes pretty much ran the show when they wanted to. They were the toughest warriors uh, whenever they felt the need to or the desire to, uh, they could conquer any of these glorious cities. And then the then the, the, the people living in the cities like, uh, like Samarkand will say, well, this is nothing new here. This happens periodically. We just make a deal with these people. Sure, sure, you can rule over us. Uh, we'll pay your taxes. Uh, just uh, why don't you settle in and uh, become corrupt, just like the rest of all of you, the conquerors, and uh, e exactly the same as the, the 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 deal that the Russians made with the Vikings when they came down the uh, uh, um, through uh, what is now Ukraine. And yeah, so so, so uh, the, the, you're now having a different situation in Central Asia, starting about 1750. Who's going to dominate the? Who's going to conquer first? Is it going to be the, the Central Asia? Is it going to be the British or is it going to be the Russians? The, the so-called Great Game, uh, uh, and, uh, and there's not the it's it's not the, other than the fact that the distances are large and that these groups are still tough fighters too. Um, the conquering is not going to be all that difficult, given the the military uh, prowess of uh, of the European uh, soldiers and this and that and so forth. By the time the so so who's who's going to pull off conquering this area? Is it the, the so-called Great Game, or the, where the British are scared to hell that Russia is going to not only get Central Asia but come on and get the and take over India as well? Um, the Rus it's the Russians, um, and it's a, it's a, the same post Crimean War era as when they were able to conquer the uh, the, uh, the 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 Caucasus. Um, and there's reasons, as John had mentioned, to come here because there's an awful lot of white uh, Russian slaves that have been uh, captured in the in the uh, in the steppes that are serving these very corrupt uh, um, emirates and the uh, khanates. And so there's a reason besides just uh, trying to get to India to come down here and conquer this territory. And 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 so the Russians come, um, and and uh, they, they they will start. And in what we now know as uh, as Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan has got this the same problem that uh, every this this is a, this is an old habit for the Kazakhis. They're in, they're powerful for a while, and then some force nearby gets more powerful than them, and so you 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 find an ally to help you stay independent for a while and and let history play out. For so for there's there's in that purple. That, that purple uh, picture up in the upper right, uh, yet another Mongol empire has come into existence uh, on the uh, the edge of Qing, uh, uh, China. They're brutal as hell. They're, they have the military power to, to conquer the Kazakhs. The Kazakhs say, well, we got to find some ally. We'll ally with the Russians. And the Russians say, yeah, we're, we're, that's just that's perfect. This suits our suits ourselves very well. The Russians are good at helping the the Kazakhs defeat the uh, the Dzungar uh, Khanate, which will disappear. But now the Russians are sort of in control, and they're going to run the show in Kazakhstan. And from Kazakhstan, it won't be hard to move into Central Asia and conquer these de these decrepit Khanates one by one. And what's the impact? The Russians will start moving. The, the, the Russia's got a population issue. Uh, the, there's great there's good land here, especially in the steppes, it's fertile as can be, you can get water, Russians will move in, uh, they'll change the diet, uh, they'll bring ir irrigation, they'll bring coffee with them, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, cotton, uh, the, it's, it's not the Soviets that start this this idea of cotton, and and and, 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 and the, the, the moment is, is, is perfect for them, uh, the 1860s, why, why is the moment for producing cotton in Russia, a an, a, an ideal crop in 1960, because we've got a civil war in the United States, and the cotton supply of the South has dried up for the 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 cotton mills of Britain, the, the horrible cotton mills of Britain, and so forth. And so Russia has got the idea, as as does Egypt at the same time, to produce cotton, and. Uh, 
and and and, and so so-called progress, so-called modernization will will arrive here in Central Asia to some degree, as as well as a, a lot of Russians as well. Um, then uh, the land is free. Uh, you come and farm it, and you can have it, which is going to create real uh, conflict with the local people that think it's their land. And then this interesting, this interesting moment comes in the 1880s, 1890s, just before World War I, where a, a generation, here's the guy on the, in the postage stamp uh, in the upper right is uh, one of the most famous. Um, uh, they, they have studied in Moscow. They're, they've been, 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 sort of been imbibed with modernization. They, they know that Central Asia cannot continue on with its... Um, it's backward, what what now has become a backward society. Uh, they've lost their leadership in terms of intellectual uh, intellectual achievement. Uh, they 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 look at Europe as the model for what they would like to, their Central Asian countries to be. There is no country. There's no country theory yet. That's all going to be made up later by uh, by the Soviets. There's a bunch of groups and a bunch of ethnic ethnicities that uh, sort of claim land. They're all intermixed, they intermarry. That's gone on for hundreds of years. And then World War I really changes some things rather dramatically in the minds of these reformers because it's, 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 it's humiliating to these, most of these people are Turkish, uh, Uzbeks, Kazakhs, and Kazakis, uh, the, uh, just the, uh, and World War One is humiliating to them because the Ottoman Empire, which they sort of look to as a modern heir, is defeated. And they are particularly disgusted with Wilson, who comes to uh, Versailles and says, you know, I'm for self-determination. And of course, it turns out that Wilson's idea of self-determination is for Europeans, not for anybody else. <laughs> and, 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 and Lenin calls them on it, and has been calling them on it. And, then they, and most of these guys will then say, OK, we're, we're siding with Lenin. And we're siding with the Soviets. Um, and World War I, of course, has ended the Russian uh, Empire. What's going to happen in Central Asia now that these, the, the empire is over? Everyone, just like in the Caucasus, various groups will declare their independence. Um, and they're going to be they're going to take care of they're going to run the show themselves. But just as in the Caucasus, by 21, by 8, 1921, the Red Army has won the Civil War, and they're going to come into Central Asia and say, well, no, you're not going to be the independent. You're going to be part of the Soviet Union, and, and there, there'll be some benefits for you. Uh, by 1925, the Soviet Union is starting to create boundaries, which won't be the current boundaries. Those boundaries are not created until 1936 by, by Stalin. Uh, but there is a there's a, a a coordination among these these local reformers in Central Asia, the so-called Jihadists uh, and the Bolsheviks, who have similar ideas, similar goals in mind. And there's a list of those similar goals in mind. Uh, they they both favor progress. They both favor anti-colonialism. Uh, they're both uh, in 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 love with the idea that the the East needs to fight back against the dominating West. There needs to be a cultural change. There needs to be mass education. Women need to be set free from Islam. Um, and even the and, the, and the Soviets at that time, Lenin in particular, is, is willing to go along with, yeah, we're, we're all for nationalism. Uh, the, the, they, they believe, because it's part of the Marxist uh, uh, the theology, that uh, nationalism is a necessary step along the way to eventually getting rid of all nationalism. And so, sure, you can, you can be nation states for a while. That's fine with us. Um, and, 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 and so it will happen. Uh, the, if Lenin will, the Stalin will come into power. He'll create the boundaries which now exist for the five different countries. And the same thing will happen in, uh, regarding, uh, regarding loyalty to the Soviet Union in Central Asia as happens in the Caucasus. Every one of these countries, uh, we, we now call them countries, will send troops to the front. Many will die. They will they will be part of a what they consider a, a great victory for for their side against the, uh, against Hitler, um, and uh, and a, 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 a sense of pride is created. Say okay, we're allowed to be our own. Our, our, we're allowed to do our own nation state stuff. Um, we are part of a great uh, uh, society now that is victorious, victorious, 
and uh, and our, our our future looks pretty good. There's all this liberation that comes from uh, from World War II, the the, the excessive creation of, 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 of farming of cotton is reduced because of the, these areas have got to produce food uh, during World War II. Uh, the Stalin is, I mean, Hitler's who claimed the Ukraine and running the Ukraine where so much of the food had been, uh, had been produced for the Soviet Union. So they get back to creating more food. Women uh, are seriously liberated from Muslims and all the other stuff. There's a, there's the famous statues in Tashkent of two famous female fighters who will die uh, killing uh, but after they killed a couple hundred uh, um, uh, uh, Nazis and and, uh, and 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 so a sense of loyalty to the Soviet Union emerges from this this generation after World War II in Central Asia and the Caucasus as well. Um, the things uh, it, from our point of view, of course, it seems like they are more backward. Their 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 blue jeans are crappy. They their food is a uh, they they get food, but it's not as good as ours. They don't have a good television. Yada 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 yeah. But from but from a generation that grew up in that area, things were things were not that bad. And uh, if you've never seen uh, been introduced to this before, there there is a referendum in May in 1991 as things are clearly falling apart in the Soviet Union. Uh, and the question is asked. Uh, uh, in this referendum, do you, would you prefer to see the Soviet Union fall apart or would you prefer the Soviet Union to survive? And the five Central Asian countries vote in enormous numbers. Now, fair enough, one can be suspicious of vote counting and so forth, but it's, there seems to be enough research to say this is pretty accurate, that the vast majority of Central Asians say, no, no, we want the Soviet Union to survive. That's in May. And of course, in August, uh, the, the the attempted coup happens, and uh, and and Yeltsin's going to take over from uh, Gorbachev, and Yeltsin's Yeltsin's got one goal in mind, and that's to get rid of Gorbachev. He hates Gorbachev because Gorbachev has tried to destroy him. And these five countries, these five republics, look around and say, "Well, we got no choice. We were not expecting this to happen, uh, but here we are. I guess we better declare independence and see what go and see what goes on." And from that time forward, uh, it's been it's been a real slugfest. I mean, these these are problematic for for these countries. Some of now doing pretty well. I mean, the 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 decline in standard of living in all these so not just the so not the, just Russia, but in these five republics is stunning. It's like triple or quadruple well, the decline in standard of living during our depression. I mean, things were really quite awful for a decade. Um, uh, and, and none of them were quite sure what to do. The, the same thing, as I mentioned, in Armenia and Georgia happens to these to, to all five of these uh, the, these uh, Central Asian republics. There's no Soviet Union to to grant them factories anymore. There's no Soviet Union that's going to say, okay, well, you you get subsidized food, you get subsidized this, and then you know we, we know the quality of everything we're producing is less than the West, but uh, but it's cheap. Um, that's all gone. Uh, and so uh, in between, now, now you've got five Central Asian countries trying to do the best they can to figure out where they go with this nationalism. And they're all in the, in the, in the process of creating nation states, which takes a while to do um, and, and to pull it off. They all got their national myths that they're trying to play on. And, you know, any intellectual looks at it and say, God, this is made up bullshit, isn't it? It's really... But every country has to do it to uh, to try and create national mess. Some of these countries, some of these independent countries are doing okay because they've got hydrocarbons. The, the two that are doing pretty well, even very well, uh, are, are uh, Kazakhstan, which has got a tiny population anyway, and it's got a lot of hydrocarbons. So they've got money to spend uh, subsidizing uh, uh, education and, the, and that so forth. And the, the other one that's uh, doing well is really this weird country of uh, Turkmenistan. With only seven million people, mainly only five, if 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 because so many people have snuck out and and the and the country's not honest about counting them, and it's a it's a, it's a dictatorship almost like North Korea, but they've got the fourth largest reserves of, of natural gas of any country in the world. And it's it's unbelievable how much wealth they've got out of hydrocarbons. So they're okay. The others. Well, Uzbekistan is sort of a middling country with uh, it's it's by got by far more what people than all the rest of the four the other four combined, and are doing okay. 
uh, they've got some hydrocarbons. Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan are, are really uh, problematic countries. Um, uh, they, they, they got no natural resources, no not much. Right, but those two countries, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, are number two and number three in the percentage of their population working overseas, um, primarily in Russia. Uh, to send money back uh, because there's there's just not enough work at, back at home. And without those people working in Russia sending money back, uh, they, uh, they, uh, those countries would uh, probably would, would, would be basket cases anyway. The basket case is enough. But those, those people living in Russia now serving in menial jobs and uh, as waiters here and there and are, are, do not feel are not well treated in Russia. Uh, the, the, the Tajiks in particular, I suppose, feel like they are really uh, lower class citizens in Russia. And if you re if you may vaguely remember, there was some mention that the, of these these terrorists that, 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 that killed 170 people or 100 and whatever. Uh, some of them were Tajiks or or, or, or or at least identified as Tajiks. Tajik is the Tajik is the odd country out because they are. They 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 are ethnic, ethnic, ethnically they feel as if they are Persian, not Turkish, and uh, and, and and so they they they've got all sorts uh, and and there's more Tajiks ethnically ethnic Tajiks living in Afghanistan than in Tajik itself, uh, Tajikistan itself. So there's all this complicated stuff of. Countries that are just, I mean, the civilizations and the cultures may be old as, as, as dirt, but the countries are brand new countries. Uh, we heard over and over again, we're not independent. We may be independent. We may be, we may be on paper independent, but we're not independent. We are, we are buffeted around by the forces of globalization. Uh, we're not in charge of our own society. Um, of foreign countries that invest in money here are in charge. Our governments make deal uh, with, uh, with with investors to keep us afloat. Uh, by, uh, if, 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 we we asked this. We intentionally asked this because we'd read this stuff over. If we if we ever saw anyone over 60, 65, was life better over the, under the Soviet Union or now? They, 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 there was there was never a stop. There was never a second to, of, of of thought that these people gave. But it was instantaneously. We were much better under the Soviet Union. Uh, and and some of them said uh, quite uh, and quite correctly they said look Eastern Europe that is the Ukraine you, well no uh, the, the 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 Soviet bloc that is Poland Hungary certainly Estonia Latvia Lithuania probably did worse under the Soviet Union than they would have if they'd been free and independent and so forth but we did better we gained we were part of the Soviet Union. If without being part of the Soviet Union, we have never had the education we have. We've never had the arts we have. We would never have uh, the, uh, the the freedom from Islam that we now have. Uh, we win, we win, and we'd still be wearing the goddamn veil as we do in Afghanistan. So, so uh, it, it's a shame that all that has gone. If you're a younger person in those areas, they're conflicted. I mean, if the educated are just like the educated in the Caucasus. We know we should stay here. We know we should be part of building this place, but we speak languages. We uh, we know our, our math, our, our, our computer, our computer skills are good. Really, we'd like to get to Switzerland if we could. Really, we'd like to get to Denmark if we could. We can even go to Italy if, if necessary. Uh, and 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 as far as raising kids, we really want to get the hell out of here. Um, so, so there's all this flux, all this confusion in, in uh, these 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 eight um, former Soviet uh, Soviet states, and the, the three in the Caucasus, the four, five in the uh, in Central Asia. Of what happens next? And if you think we're confused about the future, my God, these people are really confused. And that, of course, obviously opens the door to uh, to Islamic uh, Islamic preachers who can recruit relatively easily and move across borders and do terrorism stuff um, and they've got a they've they've got a uh, uh, they, they they've got re, they, they got a re, revenge they feel like there, there's a sense of revenge they'd like to visit on the Soviet Union Russia whomever out there at least gives them some uh, some meaning in life Everyone's looking for some meaning in life these days. 
I guess this is the center of uh, the free Zakaria has got this new book out. That's this kind of a core idea. We got this hole in our hearts um, uh, because things are falling apart and, and the people like Trump come in to fill that hole in your hearts. Fareed Zakaria's uh, mentor at Harvard, by the way, was a guy named, um, what was his name? Oh, oh God, that's, I, I, I was thinking about this the whole way over and completely forgot it. Oh, come on, old man. He wrote a book called um, Clash of Civilizations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, and he said, uh, you know, the, the it's, it is. Fukuyama. Uh, say again? Francis Fukuyama. No, no, not Fukuyama. No, that that's that that fact. He was a. Uh, 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 I'm going to get it any minute now. Fukuyama picked up on the same theme, um, but uh, oh, it that hunts. Oh, I almost said, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's he, he's now dead. But he was he was and and, and his thesis before he died was uh, uh, the 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 uh, this this sort of post World War II arrangement devised by uh, the leaders of the West to create peace and to create harmony and to create um, some sense of law and order. It's fallen apart here in the 1990s. And hey, is it Joe Huntington? Huntington, thank you very much. Samuel mm -hmm. Huntington, very good. Samuel Huntington. And, uh, and, and Zakari has run with that idea ever since and then said, you know, I, I think you have the same thing coming out of, uh, well, we, 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 don't, we don't have to go list examples we could make 300 examples just starting right now uh, of of what flux the world is in so that's a that's a that's a whole bunch of nonsense but it, if you i would encourage any of you if you ever if you if you long to go to these one of these places go uh but but figure out a way to talk to locals as opposed to just doing the uh, uh the, the 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 okay here's this here's a church and here's another church and here's yet another church and we're gonna eat here tonight mm -hmm. ah, thank thank you for listening mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it, uh, the the question was does putin have a jihadist problem i i guess the answer is maybe a little one but uh uh, he's he's more or less finessed the Caucasus with an, another Islamic warlord, right? And uh, the it sounds like the the, the young pe there's a big split in the uh, stands between the the old people who were really uh, uh, introduced to the the modern world uh, during World War II that that was uh, really the the uh, uh, huge emotional uh, turning point for them to identify uh, uh, at least anti-Hitler uh, uh, and certainly to uh, be introduced to the benefits of uh, Russian culture. So they have a little, a, a little bit of a homesickness for that, but the young people see that, like the Ukrainians, that the the future is is, is with the the West. It's hard to see with the current uh, kleptocrats in in uh, Russia uh, any kind of future for young people. And, and yet, and yet, Russia uh, is the Central Asians are incredibly incredibly dependent on on Russia. Um, and and they're more than happy to help Russia um, get uh, get get material any, any any materials they want in violation of all the uh, boycotts or all the the, the sanctions the sanctions we put on them and they're happy to make money and uh, we as, an, as another little anecdote we heard mo more than once uh, we'd asked the question several times is, is there any ever any proposal among the five Central Asian countries to reunify and sort of create a, a, a EU-like uh, uh, economic union. Our, and, and the answer was every year. It comes up every year. And uh, but, but who stops it? The Russians. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, had, I had not known this myself, but, but uh, you know, if we, if we come home, um, Central Asia was uh, Central America uh, after independence was unified for a while. 
uh, and 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 there have been multiple attempts, something like fifty five, to reunify again. And uh, who not not now to our, happily not now, but for most of that history from eighteen twenty to uh, the current day, who would be the number one uh, source of doing everything it could to keep Central Asia from unifying? Central America, I'm sorry for unifying. It was yeah. us. It was us. Uh, it was. It's in our interest to keep them divided and, and weak and, uh, and and a source of cheap bananas and blah blah blah. So under when you know that and you grow up knowing that, there's a there's a there's a sense of anger that if you have got uh, someone to uh, and and you got no job and you got no dignity uh, to, to at least to have a small group of saying we'll take revenge on these people. At least we can kill 170 of them and see what happens. Um, I guess you could, I'll really get in trouble if I say this, I guess you could even say the same thing about the Palestinians. You say, you know, we're, we're done. Uh, we're, we're, our, our history is over unless we somehow fight back. We don't know what's going to come of it, but uh, uh, we're, we are done people. And unlike, unlike the poor people that uh, once lived in where, where I'm sitting right now and where you're sitting right now too, uh, they didn't, they all died off because of our measles and our smallpox and so forth. So we don't have to face that so much, uh, but the Russians do have to face it. They get a population that didn't die off because of uh, disease. And, uh, and, and, and that, 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 that changes the dynamics of, uh, of revenge uh, in a pretty dramatic way. Sorry if I opened it. Sorry if I... <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's uh, right on point. I mean, the other stand, of course, is Afghanistan. Uh, and, and like these other, other uh, stands, they uh, had a, a period where uh, uh, they had socialists in, in Afghanistan uh, at, at one point who went to school in, in uh, Moscow. Uh, uh, we had uh, 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 an Afghan uh, refugee that fled uh, the Taliban uh, who had worked with uh, in the Russian uh, uh, in the in the post office during the, the Russian sponsored occupation. And his, his point was we, we were on the same trajectory as uh, a lot of the other, uh, stands the older generation that had this uh, feeling of warmth for the Russians. He said we were on that same uh, uh, path and overcoming our uh, uh, Muslim jihadists until America came into Afghanistan and sponsored the uh, jihadists to rebel uh, against a more modern uh, a government and for sure one that would. Uh, uh, promote the the welfare of women, as we saw in a couple of your slides. So not only did we uh, oppose that in Central America, we, we opposed it in Central Asia. Yeah, everything that I didn't learn in high school. It took long to... <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's been a lifetime journey to say, you know, I would... Damn, high school teachers had known this stuff. It would have been it would have made life a lot easier than having to work it out later. I see a lot of grim faces here, John. I don't know if we we've bored everyone to death or. Uh, uh -huh. Any any. By the way, does anyone know uh, if uh, if Manchester City came back and uh, and beat the uh, Real Madrid? I just it was two to one when I left. Never mind. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question of Bill Walker. Can you hear me, Bill? Um, I vaguely remember meeting a hematologist at your house, I think. He was Russian, and it was in the 90s, so it was yeah. Soviet Union was falling apart. And he said the same thing um, Ramsey did about how the old people didn't like it one bit because all of their safety net was gone. Right. And, uh, that was... Uh, I can't remember what was he doing in this country. That was Andre Vesenyev, and, and Jim knows him well too. I, uh, in the in 1992, we were trying to establish a, a partnership with our health services department and the health department in in uh, uh, Abarovsk, uh, in in far Russian, 
Far Eastern Russia. And so I went there as part of a USAID oh. effort to try to establish that and we met up with Andre and then we became friends and he came and visited our family, he stayed with us for a while. He's uh, He ultimately stayed not not so much connected to medicine, but was doing more uh, other kinds of international work. And then we've kind of lost contact uh, since the uh, communications in Russia have gotten so, so difficult now. Uh, I think uh, my impression is he's pretty much pro-Putin and is also highly religious at this point. But at that point, he was very progressive. We're trying to establish a relationship that didn't happen. We didn't get funded. University of Virginia Mayo Clinic got funded, not us. Um, but that's how it started. You know. He was from Vladivostok, right? No, Habarovsk. How far? How far away it's, was? That? Oh, it's a couple. It's a few hundred miles north, right on the Amur River. Yeah, it's just north of North Korea. Yeah, yeah. I was there. I was in Habarovsk. So. But never mind. You were, you were on the, uh, the, the Siberian. Yeah, Trans-Siberian, yeah. Trans-Siberian. You got to have Rolsk, and then and the, and the last leg of the Trans-Siberian to Vladivostok was uh, was all, had to be at night because the, the border between Russia and China, uh, between Soviet Union and, and Red China, was right along the Amur River. Huh. And it was heavily fortified. <laughs> yeah, right. And they, 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 uh, neither side wanted you to see any of the uh, military installations. Huh. Yeah. In in ninety two, just after the disruption of the Soviet Union, uh, Vladivostok had had not been traveled much at all by by uh, tourists, and so we it was dangerous to stay in hotels because it was they were owned by the Russian mafia. So we stayed at, slept in hospitals while we were there. So. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, that's that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, now everything's from from everything's owned by the Russian mafia. So uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. exactly right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you all. I'm sorry for again for the uh, technical difficulty at the beginning. We were a little bit out of practice. Uh, so um, uh, very good. If there's no no more questions, uh, we'll we'll come back uh, next week. All the, on to Japan, yeah. And yeah, we'll do a little bit of a little bit of Japan. Beautiful. Great session. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thank you. See everybody. Good to see you. Okay. Could you? Could I have that uh, COVID test? I just want. <laughs> I didn't cough a bit. I got.